All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and it's so nice to be back here on Adobe Live uh, in my regular streaming environment. It was really cool. It's hard to believe it was already a week ago where we had the um, uh, piano and chill session doing some uh, live music. Actually revisited that earlier this week, but made it a bit more relaxational. It was pretty intense last Friday. So a couple days ago, I did one that was just purely just chill background instrumental, no singing, just kind of really get you in the mood. <laughs> uh, but in any case, it's great to be back here. And uh, today we're going to be covering something that I get asked quite a bit. And there's always just a little bit of confusion around it because this is something that we've had in the Adobe Video and Audio apps for a very long time. Uh, which is called Dynamic Link. And now as we've kind of advanced a lot of the applications, new applications have been brought in, things like Character Animator, well, there may be ways that you can use Dynamic Link that you weren't even aware of. So if you're a Dynamic Link old schooler, OG pro, you don't need to watch this. You already know how this works. For those of you who are new to the video applications, or for that matter, if you're editing somewhere else, or if you're using a combination of other tools and you wonder, well, why CC? Why Creative Cloud? What you know, aside from, yeah, it's cool, it's Adobe, but why else, what's a, what's a huge benefit of using all of these things together? Well, Dynamic Link is a huge part of that. And essentially, for those of you unfamiliar, it's basically a way for you to use Premiere Pro timeline sequences and After Effects without rendering, to bring After Effects compositions into Premiere without rendering, to bring Premiere Pro projects into Audition, to bring Character Animator into After Effects or Premiere, and even to be able to go back and forth between Photoshop and Premiere, or in the case of Photoshop Illustrator into After Effects, really seamlessly, really easily, because those file formats are natively supported. So this is what we're going to talk about today. We've got about 50 some minutes to do that and uh, hopefully lick it all. So as always, uh, unlike the regular streams, I've got the live interactive chat while I'm here on the masterclass on Adobe Live. So great to see you. Tim and Kapil, Michelle, oh, thank you so much. Jack Watson, Jurgen and Steve, how are you all doing? Very nice to see you. I see we've got more people over on YouTube as well. All right, BWE Entertainment asking about some sound reduction things. So you can always find that on my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Jason Levine video, or there's many of them archived on the CC YouTube channel as well. Arvind, how's it going? Um, so you're asking the same thing. All right, well, first of all, the conversation's happening over on behance.net slash live. But if you wanna ask me things about audio and stuff, um, if there's time at the end, I'll try and answer some of those, but you can find lots of those videos archived right here. I bade for you. I'm doing great. Okay. And Dana Pride, what is happening? <laughs> Mind blown already with the vocabulary. Dana, you're, 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 you're a great audience for me. Thank you. You're not even making me work all that hard. Okay. So let's go ahead and cut over to, we're going to start with Premiere Pro because this is kind of the fundamental first uh, or should say Premiere and After Effects, because this was really the first kind of introduction of dynamic link to the masses, right? So a really common workflow, right, for any kind of editor is, you know, you're doing something in Premiere, and again, depending upon sort of where you are in terms of your skill level and finesse level, you might want to do something in Premiere in After Effects that you can't do in Premiere, Okay, or maybe you have, you know, a text animation or something that someone's created for you in After Effects and you want to bring that into your Premiere Pro timeline. But the key is you don't know if it's going to look right. So you want to be able to effectively see it and then if need be, make changes to it. Maybe you change color, maybe you change font, maybe you change a 3D camera, you know, anything that's in After Effects. You can, you can view inside of Premiere Pro via this dynamic link. And that's a really key thing to remember is that dynamic link is not only um, a non-render technology, but it allows you to build anything that you're doing in say After Effects, drag that into a Premiere sequence, and then see it in the context of the edit, right? So this is a huge opportunity for you to be able to make tweaks and changes in one and see them dynamically update and reflect it in the other, okay? Oh, of course, also we've got people coming to us on Periscope. What's up? Hey, hey, Desiree Corbus and AJ Wooten. Nice to see you. All right, very cool. Very, very cool. All right, so here uh, I've got some footage actually featuring Mr. Paul Trenny, whom you just saw moments ago. This is from a, uh, a trip that we had, gosh, almost a decade ago. Uh, we were touring in Africa and uh, we took a little delay and did a, did a safari shoot there with Terry White. And uh, this is a, a clip that I've shown. 
this clip that I've shown a couple times before. So in the case of something like this, and this was something which when we introduced this feature that I'm gonna show you, this was, this was really new and hip at the time. You see it kind of all the time now. But what I wanted to do here was I wanted to add some 3D tracked text. So as they're driving, as we're driving into the bush here, I wanted to orient some text in 3D space along the edges of this, of this road, okay? Not something that you can do in Premiere Pro. Now, yes, you could create text and kind of bend and skew it and orient it, but there's no way to track 3D motion here yet. So for that, we'd have to go to After Effects. Now, again, I could bring this into After Effects and do it manually, but wouldn't it be nice if I could do it live and kind of see it live and in the context of as I'm editing? That's exactly what we're going to do. So how do we do that? All right. Well, with Dynamic Link, if I wanted to say, bring, uh, you know, what I'm doing in After Effects into Premiere so that it's always live in After Effects, meaning that anything I change in After Effects, I update in Premiere. There's a couple ways that we can do that. All right. So from the timeline here, right, I want to send this clip over to After Effects. I can simply right click, control click, and I can choose replace with After Effects composition. Okay. So that is effectively the equivalent of taking an After Effects project and bringing it into Premiere Pro. Similarly, if I'd already started an animation or something I was doing, I could go up to the file menu and go into Adobe Dynamic Link and import an After Effects comp, or again, from here, replace. The reason I'm emphasizing what this is all about is that this is, the direction is After Effects into Premiere, okay? So we're gonna be able to bring this video into After Effects, but it's the After Effects comp which is actually now living inside of Premiere. The footage that lives here now, is not gonna live here as footage. It's going to live here as the After Effects composition. So let's do that. So I'm going to right click here and choose replace with After Effects comp. It's going to ask me to give it a name. Pure nature interaction, yes indeed. <laughs> oh, you've only seen the vids and pics on Facebook, Steve. Yeah, oh yeah. There's a long period where, uh, uh, I was showing a lot of this video and uh, cut a little um, trailer. Part of what I was down there for was doing some stuff with uh, with Nikon with their new, at the time, new D800 and D4 and shooting a bunch of HD video and just showing the quality and all the glass and everything and showing how it all worked with Premiere natively. This was kind of in the, still in the DSLR boom. So, okay. So here we are now in After Effects. I point that out because again, a lot of times people are like, did you just change the UI? What just happened? So here we are, you can see we are now inside of After Effects. And you can also see that it has built a comp for us, which we accordingly named here, Dynamic Link Adobe Live Linked Comp, okay? So just to point out now, when I go back to Premiere, remember I told you the footage doesn't live here anymore. It's now the After Effects project, the .aep file. If I zoom in on this, you can see just that. You can see it says .aep. So this is the After Effects project, now living live inside of Premiere. But it's live here too, so now we can do whatever we want. So in the case of this, like I said, maybe I wanna do a little 3D camera tracking. Um, I don't know if this, I, I haven't tried it on, the, on this exact clip recently, so this may not be the one I typically use. But to do that, I'm simply going to choose Track and Stabilize, Track Camera, and we're gonna hope for the best here. And this is just telling us that it's going to ignore masks and effects while it's doing the track. Okay, no problem. Click okay. And it's now going to do its analysis, okay? So now, again, the point is, what I did by creating that dynamic link relationship is I've now taken the footage from Premiere, sent it over to After Effects, placed it in an After Effects comp, and then effectively, it's as if I was dragging the After Effects comp back into Premiere. And you can, in fact, drag and drop dynamic links and I'll show you that in a moment, okay? That long grass is perfect for lions and leopards to hide in. Indeed, and we saw many. We saw many, and they weren't so much as hiding as resting because uh, it was winter time, and uh, some of them looked like they'd been kind of beaten down, and you know, the, the, all the guides there, they know these animals, and they were saying that one, one lion in particular had been fighting with another, you know, another, another pack tried to come in, and it was, he said it was really, very, very intense, um, and others had just fed, so they were otherwise kind of tired <laughs> and sleepy, so uh, kind of amazing. Okay, so again, we're not gonna go into the, the whole details of this, but just to show you, 
now what you see is there's all of these 3D tracking points, okay? And as I hover over them, it's showing you this tracking target, which effectively in the perspective that we see is how I'll be able to orient text or an object or a null in that 3D space. So I like this one. This is actually kind of right along the edge of the path there. So I'm simply going to click on this and then right click, control click and choose create text and camera, okay? And when I do that, now you can see the text right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and first, let's, uh, let's change this color, something like that. All right, and we'll call this, uh, just say Africa. Oh, why did the text color not change? Do that again. Sorry, I changed it. I thought I was had it all selected there. Okay. All right. So now, if we do if we do nothing else, all right, it's a little big, so I may want to just scale it down. But if I do nothing else and I just scrub through this, okay, as expected, now you can see that we have true. 3D oriented text, okay? And we can add, we can add multiple, uh, multiple layers of this, uh, you know, as we're going along the road here, all right? Now, one other cool thing of doing this, again, not to, gonna get into all the details here. If we just twirl down the text layer, and I wanna, I'll be zooming in here because I have this in such a way that it's, uh, it might be just a little, a little difficult to see here. Um, so first of all, let's just scale it down a little bit. It's a little, it's a little, little large, okay? Maybe something like that. Okay, so obviously you have all of your XYZ 3D capabilities here. But more importantly, let me twirl up transform. You'll see, and I just point this out because this is something which again, many people may be kind of unfamiliar with. We've made some changes to how we work with 3D. Some of you will remember, well, we always have classic, excuse me, classic 3D, which is also kind of known as our two and a half D. And then we had the, the ray trace 3D renderer, which was good for a time, but these days kind of antiquated and slow and just outdated. And then a couple of years ago, we added the Cinema 4D 3D render engine. That's in here. Now you'll notice that geometry options currently is grayed out. That's because we're in the classic 3D renderer. If I wanted to add some beveling or extrusion or kind of, you know, additional lighting and really take advantage of the 3D space, I need to change it to the Cinema 4D renderer. So it tells you that right here. So if I go ahead and click on change renderer, all I have to do is twirl this down. Now, again, if you haven't done this in a while, the ray trace 3D renderer, it's gone. It's gone for a reason because it was slow, it was old, it was not as effective as the Cinema 4D renderer. I know some people are like, yes, but it did other things. True, but we're moving forward and trying to get more optimized and again, more speed optimized for working with 3D. And this one just delivers results a lot faster than the old Ray Trace 3D renderer. So go ahead and click OK on this and you'll see that one of the things that it enables, okay, Extruded and beveled text and shapes, reflections, curved footage layers. All right, this is what we want. So I'll click OK on this. And when I do that, immediately geometry options uh, becomes available to us. So now if I go ahead and, you know, if we started to, let's say, extrude this. Now, again, <laughs> got to start tweaking this a bit. What is up, Abel 1212? All right, and then maybe I'll add a little bit of a bevel on here. All right, let's minimize the extrusion for right now. Come down to my material options so you can kind of see this a little bit better. All right, and we can adjust sort of reflection, intensity, all right, like that. Let's get some roll off on the reflection as well. Okay, the sharpness, that's fine. Specular shininess, not to worry about that so much. Diffuse, all right. And uh, again, you know, if we wanted to say, move this, rotate it, adjust it, you know, we can do all of those things right on here, right on screen, right on canvas, all right. You can also do it as I showed you a moment ago. If we go into our path options here. Oh, sorry, transform options. See, it's getting a little, a little, difficult even for me to work in this little space here. You know, we could we could move this around so you can kind of see what that looks like. All right, kind of oriented exactly however we want, tilt it a little bit forward like that. Okay, you get the idea. No bevel, you know, at all. 
just extrude it. Let's add back in some of the bevel. All right. <laughs> it's my finest work yet. Okay. Anyway, my point is now that we have this in here, right? If we go back to Premiere Pro, we don't have to do anything. What you now see is that we are seeing what we're doing in real time, no less, in Premiere Pro. What? Yes. So that is the essence of dynamic link. And anything that we do, so let's say, let's get out of all this text stuff for now. That's all great. Let's just say I wanted to add some kind of a, you know, a basic, um, basic grade to this. Now, again, I could easily just do this in Premiere, but I'm already here. So I want to add, you know, some color. Maybe I like using something like, um, uh, I'm trying to think uh, uh, like Magic Bullet, uh, Colorista or something like that. Okay, I wanna do that in After Effects as opposed to in Premiere. Okay, so I'm adding a little vignetting here. Maybe we'll also, while we're at it, add a little bit of vibrance. Okay, and let's do some shadow tint. Kind of warm up the shadows as well. But I'm gonna cool off the highlights. Okay, just trying to make this obvious and different. Okay, again, you see that, click back to Premiere, <laughs> change is applied, okay? That's dynamic link in a nutshell. Now again, that's going from After Effects to Premiere. What that means is, let's say, let's go ahead and start another composition. Let's take this same movie, I'm gonna place it in a new comp, all right? And uh, this one, I'm just gonna type some 2D text, okay? All right, and uh, let's go ahead and align this. Oh, it's not center justified. Arrgh. Oh, it is center justified, okay. All right, so that's fine. I can take this now, click on grab the uh, comp from After Effects, go into Premiere, and I can just drop this right into Premiere Pro's project panel. And you can see it appears there just like that, okay? One of the key things with Dynamic Link, particularly where Premiere and After Effects are concerned, but it matters across all the apps, is that you can only use the dynamic link in one direction between two apps. So, in other words, I'm now bringing After Effects comps into Premiere. Remember, even though we did the create uh, After Effects composition, I'm bringing After Effects into Premiere. I just brought in, I just dragged another one from project panel to project panel. That's the key, okay? So you can't have now, if I wanted to bring Premiere Pro stuff into After Effects, that's a second direction. You can't do those simultaneously. So I'm gonna show you that in a second. But again, just to point out here, if I made a new selection from this one here, now this is nothing, you know, nothing spectacular, but again, go back to After Effects and I say, oh, you know, I don't really love that, uh, I don't love that, that color. Let's, let's go with blue and uh, you know, whatever. All right, and I'll change the font as well, although I love Cool Vetica. Let's just make it bigger. Okay, like that. Back over to Premiere, <laughs> changes applied, okay? Dynamic link. How many dynamic links can you have? Many, <laughs> All right? It's really kind of just system dependent. Um, I know of some people who've used, I've heard of as many as like 99, that's insane. It is of course, a bit of a, a, it's a bit of a drag on your system, right? The more of them that you have, also something to keep in mind. Now we do have the After Effects sort of render playback engine in Premiere as well. So if you bring something into Premiere and you haven't cached the frames in After Effects yet. Now this is just video, there's nothing moving here. In the case of this one, you can see by the dotted lines here, I haven't cached all of my frames just yet. It's not gonna play in Premiere Pro in real time because it's using the After Effects playback engine here. So just like in After Effects, we would cache these frames, right? We're, we're doing a, a preview, formerly known as RAM preview. Once this is all green, it's also gonna play in Premiere. But you don't even have to do it here because Premiere Pro will work the same way if you simply scrub through it. Now again, towards the end here, you can see it's slowing down. The beginning is very fluid. I'll just play it real time. Right about here, oh, it actually played all the way through. It just cached the rest of them, all right? As you scrub, through the same, that scrubbing process that you would do in After Effects to cache those frames, same thing works in Premiere Pro as well, okay? What's up, Talon, Words, uh, Talon Wadsworth, how you doing, man? Good to see you. 
Talon's got a stream coming up next week, I believe, with uh, um, one of our VPs of design, Jamie Myrold, talking about XD and design and some other things. I saw that on the schedule. Very, very cool. All right. <laughs> I want to be sitting next to Jim, next to him, right basking in that glow. Oh, yes, indeed. Nice. All right. Very cool. <laughs> What's up, Rohit? Okay. Jorge de la Mora. Oh, sweet. Thank you. It is super cool, man. Very, very cool. Noor, uh, text in 3D like in the Star, Wa Star Wars intro? Absolutely. Yeah. Now that is just, that's just flat text. Uh, that's two, you know, that's sort of two and a half D, right? That's kind of what we talked about before. And that, you can still do that with the classic 3D renderer where it's, think of what you can kind of do. It's one of the, like the postcard style in Photoshop where you can shine lights on it and have reflections, but if you move the camera, you'll see that it's, you know, it's it's paper thin, right? It, it You can't, the Star Wars stuff isn't extruded. It looks like that, right? However, if you add the Cinema 4D render engine, you can extrude it out and then bevel and do all those other things that I just showed you. And then you can get very complex with lighting and shadows and, and, and fall off of the shadows. Um, we didn't do any of that here, but you get the idea, okay? So again, that's a dynamic link from After Effects into Premiere. Okay, let's go the other way. So I'm gonna close this for a moment. All right, and let's open up this documentary trailer like last time. You like the extra templates in Premiere they added last year. Talk about the motion graphics templates. Oh yeah, now we're adding those all the time, by the way. So that's, uh, those, those come in, you know, sometimes daily, they're just, they're always, always happening, all right? So now, again, this is the fuzzy documentary we were working on. So in this case, I'm gonna go over to After Effects, let's close this as well, I'll save it and I'll close it, okay? Um, in the case of what I wanna do here, now I actually want to, let's say that I've got my, my edit is locked, so now I'm really gonna do, like I mentioned, a lot of people like to do color correction, color grading, and After Effects, maybe they're gonna do a lot of stylizing or just finishing in After Effects, okay? Um, people use After Effects for all kinds of things. I have a couple of friends though who specifically just do like finishing, grading, and final effects and titles. They, they do all the final edit stuff and export here because they just love it here, okay? Great, so you can use Dynamic Link for that as well. Now, just as I showed you with Premiere, you have the same Dynamic Link menu here, all right? So a new Premiere Pro sequence, you can import one. Now what's cool about this, I'll just show you the dialogue. If you go to import and you click on, uh, so here I'll navigate to the same one. All right. Uh, and actually, no, that's on this drive here. Sorry, wrong drive. So it's here. Uh, da -da. All right, fuzzy doc. Okay. So you can see the various projects in here. I just wanna make sure I'm in the same one. Doc Trailer 01. Okay, so when I click on Doc Trailer 01, that's the project that I'm currently working on in Premiere. Again, you can do this without it being open in Premiere. That's the other key. That's something worth mentioning. You don't have to have, like, if I were, uh, if I were, um, in the case of what I'm doing now, wanting to finish the look of this, I don't need to open the project in Premiere. I can just open it directly in After Effects, which is super cool. But when you select the project file, it now shows you all of the available sequences for that project. So the one that we want to use is this one here, main timeline, okay? So I could select that. Or even more fun, <laughs> fun, I mean, that's, that's a fun way of putting it. Um, I can just take the sequence right here, all right? And I'm simply going to click tab shift over and drop it in the project panel. And there it is. And just as with before, remember when we did the, um, the dynamic link and we saw that it was a dot AEP? Now in After Effects, you can see it's the dot PRPROJ, okay? So this is the Premiere project now living here, all right? So uh, we can just drag it down to the new comp icon, okay, that uh, black, uh, transparent space there is where we, you know, we've added some of the uh, the text and things. So you can see, by the way, so everything that's in there. So here's, if you remember from last week, we were doing like the titles and things. This is a motion graphics template. It's all there, right? 
all the various cuts are there, my little inserts. Everything is here that we did, all right? So let's say again that, uh, you know, in the midst of this, maybe I do want to make a change to the edit. Maybe I do want to make some kind of modification to what's happening here, okay? So again, now what we see in After Effects is coming to us live from Premiere. So remember before we updated After Effects, it showed up in Premiere Pro. So let's come over here. Let's go to the same, same spot. All right, and let's say that I wanted to add some kind of a still over top of this. Don't ask me why, but I'm, I'm just gonna do that for right now. So here, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab this, this old school image of fuzzy right there. Okay, so first of all, let me scale this to the frame size. All right, it's not quite big enough, but that's okay. We're gonna go to effects controls. Let's scale it up a little, move it over. Let's scale it even more. Photos from 1969. Okay. And then we're just going to use a blend mode. Let's see if we do overlays. Probably going to make it too dark. That's okay. I mean, it's fine. Screen it. No. Uh, soft light. Fine. Whatever. You get the idea. Could do this in After Effects as well, but all the media is here in Premiere. So now, when I click back to After Effects, same thing, right? The change that I just made in Premiere is now reflected here live. I didn't save, right? You can still see, you know, we've got the asterisk asterisk up here showing me that it's not saved yet. Similarly over here, I didn't save anything. I just clicked over and because of the dynamic link that we established, it just works. All right? So cool, so easy. Um, it's a fantastic way to work. The other really nice thing that I love about this, I can't remember if we always did this or not, um, is that uh, you just have, you know, you can see all of the, the waveform, you can see all of the markers with all of the marker text, everything is in here. So it just makes it really easy to again, kind of keep working. And then if you need to make changes, they'll update live, all right? Let's go over to some of the questions here. All right, Brajesh. All right, let's see. Sometimes when I open, reopen my project in Premiere, dynamic link doesn't work properly. Like I have to go somewhere and link it again. Rajesh, there, I will tell you, there are some times, uh, there are some times where, yes, sometimes the dynamic link loses its, its connection. Um, you can easily relink it, just like relinking media, but it does happen. I don't know why it happens. I use typically, a, you know, a bunch of them usually all the time and I don't normally see it. I do see it sometimes. So there may be some lingering things. Um, if it's something that's reproducible for you, you know, I highly recommend at replying to uh, at Adobe Care and they'll tackle it or hit me up on Twitter and I can submit it for you as well. Okay. Yoni Levin, you don't have to hit enter to render the video. No, that's awesome, right? Talon, yes, oh yes, he's having conversation with Jamie Myrold, VP of Design, Richard Ting, Design VP at RGA, and hopefully a bunch of community folks to tune in. Very cool, so you definitely wanna check that out. I believe that's on the 16th too, right? At 11 or 11.30 a.m. You are actually conflicting with our own Adobe Live uh, non-NAB, NAB uh, live stream that we'll be doing next week, uh, 9.30 to 11.30, but hey, we can all share, that's right, you know? Very cool. All right. All right, cool. Just checking some of the other comments. Thank you, Des. All right, Sao Design. All right, very, very cool. Okay, so that is Premiere Pro and After Effects and Dynamic Link. I don't like saying game changing, but it's pretty game changing if you've never used it before. And again, it just gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of moving between the apps and keeping things live. Now, another... Um, fairly significant need for doing something like that is when you are working with a final audio mix. So as many of you have heard me say many, many times over the years, uh, I, um, I do all of my audio mixing in, in auditions. So, I mean, occasionally, let me, let me rephrase that. Occasionally I will, um, actually, I guess we can send the same one over. 
occasionally I'll, uh, I'll do it in Premiere if there really isn't that much, you know, if it's just very simple balancing. Uh, maybe I just need to add something like, um, you know, a master, uh, a master limiter or effect or something like that. I might do it in Premiere. But outside of that, if there's anything that really needs mixing, tweaking, denoising, finishing, fixing, I'll do it in Audition because you can also finish from Audition. Just like in After Effects, you're talking about finishing and exporting from there, Audition has the same capability. Now, you have Dynamic Link from Premiere into Audition, but you only have a one-way trip, all right? It's not back and forth. There is a back and forth, but that you have to render. I will show you that as well, okay? But the, the one-way direction, which is non-render, allows you to take your entire Premiere Pro sequence and send it over to Audition so you can do your audio finishing, audio mixing, audio mastering, all right? So if we take this main timeline again, and there's not, there's not so much audio in here, only about four tracks of audio, it's kind of scattered again, we didn't quite finish this, but that's okay. Select the timeline, go up to the Edit menu, and we're going to choose Edit in Adobe Audition Sequence, okay? Just like that. And when you do that, it pulls up this dialogue, so we can keep it main timeline, that's fine. Selection, entire sequence, okay. Yeah, I, I was gonna see if I had my work area bar. If I only wanted to send that edited bit, I could do that as well. All right, and then video, send through dynamic link. Now, if you don't wanna do that, you can also choose to export a DV preview video, which is in DV size, so Two, two, two things about that. So one, it's rendering a video. So depending upon what kind of effects and things you have going on there, you know, um, dissolves and crossfades and lots of lumetry and maybe a lot of keyframing and how long it is will affect how long it takes to render. So that's at a time loss to you. Also, um, if you, again, you have Premiere living live inside of Audition. So if you're gonna make a video change, now you can't change positions of audio and things, otherwise you have to resend it to Audition, all right? So the video remains live, but the audio is locked to the video. Um, you, can't do, you can't make any sort of change or, or do anything like that. So the DV preview video, that's the way it used to be. Dynamic Link is just a lot easier. I will also say though, depending upon you know the complexity of the project, sometimes you just want a quick render, especially if you're gonna be sending that mix back to Premiere anyway. It can be a lot lighter on the load on the system, and you may also get just better scrubbable performance in Audition without using Dynamic Link. Sometimes, sometimes no. You just, you just have to try it. Or you can choose to have no video at all, and it'll just send the audio components over, which is fine too. If you don't need to see the video to mix it, don't do that. It's far less stress on the project, on your system. Things will work very smoothly regardless, okay? But we're gonna use Dynamic Link. You can, of course, choose Audio Handle, so if you've trimmed anything, it'll keep you know a second of those trims that you don't see, or you can, I think it goes up to five seconds here. You can also choose to transfer clip and track effects, or ignore them, or render them with non-transferable effects, or remove all of them, so it's up to you. I usually just transfer them. It's all non-destructive. So if you've got something in the mixer here, if you've got even stuff that you've done in the essential sound panel, it'll automatically, um, it'll automatically carry over. All right. So, all right, just checking here. EVBJ1, okay. Uh, pan and volume info also goes over non-destructively. And then we're gonna choose to open it in Audition. So let's click okay. That directory already exists. So I've done this once before, I think, cause so let's go ahead and just overwrite it. Mm -hmm. You can see it's opening an audition. And there we are, just like that, okay? So now, and notice it even took the color coding. So what's actually pretty cool is that um, in, I wanna say, is it a year and a half ago? Two and a half years ago, we released this. And it was like IBC, I think 2018, when we changed the color schemes in Premiere. So, it's kind of hard to see here because we're not just looking at the audio clips, but if you look at the audio, this stuff here, <laughs> it's in that kind of, you know, I don't know what color we call this, that lightish purple, blue, green, blue. Come back over here, lightish purple, blue, green, blue. So the colors are the same. The, the clip colors are the same. 
not that that matters, but it does kind of matter, right? And I like it to look, you know, there's there's a reason for all the color coding that we do. So now, if we just go ahead and sort of like know, talking play. back and forth with your instruments, and you just sort of feel what's going on. Nothing else is going on. You know, after nearly 30 years. All right. So again, dynamically linked, all right? Now let's say, again, as I'm doing this, I want the video reference, we're, we're, we're time locked here, but I'm still working on the grade and some of the other things and maybe some of the graphics or something like that. And I wanna be able to see that while I'm doing the sound mix, okay? So again, I could come back over to Premiere, all right? Oh, and here I was gonna match the time, so uh, 5121 here, all right? And uh, let's just go ahead and type, let's type in some text. Oh, with the worst font choice possible. What the, what is that? Uh, sure. And put a little background box around this. Okay. That works. All right, and I could do a little animation on that if I wanted. Okay. So here. So here, let's make this, this here. And we're gonna set the keyframe position there. And then we'll wind back to the beginning. Oh, whoops. Not that one. Did I set the keyframe? Yes, I did. Okay. And let's just drag it off. We're still making records together. All right. Wow, that was very slow. <laughs> Okay. Again, this has nothing to do with my lousy still animation. Making... Just trying to show you that we're adding some elements here because it's still live. You know, click back to audition. We're still making. And there it is. Are we right? so, so the animation that I just we're still did. Making... You're seeing it here now as well, live, live and in the flesh. Okay. Dynamic link. It's awesome. It's so awesome. All right. Now, as I mentioned, if you wanted to completely finish the video, the edit, the sound mix, everything, and export from here. When you go up to the file menu, export, you can say export back to Premiere Pro or export with Adobe Media Encoder. And when you do that, now this lets you, it's the same Media Encoder dialog that you have in Premiere. So you can choose all the formats, all of the routing options that you have, everything. So you can literally do the finish here. Now, if you wanted to send the mix back to Premiere Pro. So we actually want to finalize everything but send it back here in a, in a, in a stereo or a 5.1 um, sound file. That's that's how you send it back to Premiere. So it's, again, there is no two-way back and forth. You can't take the Audition project and dynamically link that into Premiere. It's only Premiere into Audition for now. This is a huge request. I believe you can find it on our um, user voice as well. Vote it up, let's make that happen because I think that really needs to happen. But up at the multi-track um, menu here, you'll see that you can choose to export to Premiere Pro. Again, same option that you had here under export. You always have a couple of different ways to access the same thing. So if we choose export to Premiere Pro, this now allows us to name it. Again, we can tell it where we want it to go. So uh, let's put it in the right place. All right, it's gonna be here. Okay. And then we can choose to export each track as a stem. All right, so a rendered stem with all the changes we made, just one complete full duration stem. Buses as well, or just a mono stereo or, or 5.1 mixed file. And if this were meant to be like a master for stereo, I would do a stereo file. So if I go ahead and click stereo, click export, it does the export real quickly. We're back in Premiere now. It says, okay, where do you want it to go? New audio track, 
We have a track here called Music, and you know, it tells you where do you want it to go. Just put it in a new track, of course. Click OK on that. All right. And now if we maximize this, we can now see here on track eight, all right, here is our new mix of everything. And you can see all the various audio files are kind of represented in here, all right? So this is the new mix that we just created that contains everything that was in here, all right? Pretty sweet, right? And this one, of course, this has, you know, all the music and everything else. My name's Fuzzy Island. Stories, tell stories. Oh, maybe the music was muted there. I mean, that's the thing about Fuzzy. Yeah, he's all okay. So, really simple, really easy. Dynamic link, Premiere Pro, into Audition, just like that. Add text, add titles, add graphics, do what you want to do. The Premiere side stays live. But I want to point out that if you start editing, you can edit in here, but the audio that is in, in Audition is not going to move with it. All right, so that's a limitation there. Right, so that's why I told you it's really about, you know, the, the edit is locked and you're doing your final sound mix. If you want to edit and then you want to rework on it in Audition, you just need to send the sequence again, right? So let's say that I, you know, I trimmed a couple of these things, you know, whatever, I don't need to do the trim here, or, or you know, change the timing, I would just come back up to this again and do export sequence and give it another name and it'll open up another sequence. So here, even if I did this, let's let's try that. All right, so where did this go, by the way? Oh, yeah, okay. It did go in the right place. Main timeline too. Okay, there it is. So now we're in main timeline two. By the way, if I come over here, Here's main timeline one. So really, we make it pretty easy to do that. You know, if you're gonna make a change to the edit, you can do that. Now, of course, this new main timeline two, if I didn't send that mix over, it doesn't have any of the non-destructive stuff that we may have already edited in main timeline one in Audition. So that's why I'm saying you really need the edit locked if you're gonna be dynamically linking over to Audition. At least that's what I would recommend, okay? Sweet. Okay, Brijesh, is it okay directly to jump over video editing? I have done graphic designing as well, but I am more interested in video edits and stuff. Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, that's, uh, you know, I, I hear this all the time. So absolutely. I mean, the nice thing is if you sort of know Photoshop in particular, Photoshop and Illustrator, if you're going to be doing any kind of animation, text animation, those kind of things in, um, in After Effects, if you know how layers work and you know how like the Photoshop animation timeline works, you can you already know the basis of animating in After Effects. That's the cool thing. After Effects does a lot more, way more options, right? Hundreds of built-in effects, all you know, 3D and 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 the Cinema 4D and Cinema 4D integration as well, which I'm not going to show today because it's not. I'll, I'll point it out, but yeah, I'm not going to be doing that. Um, but yeah, I think that's a great that's a great way to go. What's up, Cody Bear? It was so good to see you with Voodoo Val yesterday. I got to tune in for a few seconds to see you back on the stream. So nice. Steve, super handy feature. Nice. All right. Uh, Steve Fortin. Are sequences natively checkbox and encoder, preferences panel, need to be checked before rendering when using dynamic link? I had some issue. Sequences natively checkbox and encoder need to be checked before rendering when using dynamic link. I'm not really sure what you're asking there, Steve. Um, I don't I don't know what you mean by that. When you do your final render, if it, if it exists in the timeline in Premiere or After Effects and you go to render it, it'll render what's in there. So if it's coming from Premiere, um, it should work as as expected. But maybe maybe I'm not understanding your question exactly. Might need to rephrase. Okay. All right, so that's dynamic link into Audition, all right? Last thing, last two things. First, we're gonna do a little bit of Photoshop here. So I mentioned that, uh, let's get off of my face. I mentioned that um, while we don't have dynamic link uh, with Photoshop per se, um, you do have the ability to create and work with Photoshop files and Photoshop layers directly in After Effects, as I just mentioned, 
and Premiere Pro. Now with Premiere, what's super cool is let's say that you want to do, you know, of course, now you have all this capability with the essential graphics panel that I just showed you, but maybe there's something that you want to do that just, you know, like content to wear, fill a frame or something or whatever it is that you want to do in Photoshop. You can build, create a new Photoshop file directly from Premiere Pro, okay? So what's cool about that is if you do say new Photoshop file like this, it'll automatically take the attributes of your sequence. Now this used to be more of an issue. I mean, this is not a big deal anymore. You would expect this to work, but you know, back in the day, particularly before they kind of redid the command N dialogue in Photoshop, it was not uncommon for someone to go into Photoshop and you know, you're already working in Photoshop. Maybe you're not working on video all the time. So you'd start working, you do this whole design, realizing that one, it wasn't square pixels Two, you know, the frame size was wrong. Anyway, any number of things. This way, the pixel aspect ratio is correct. The frame size is identical. It's just gonna be exactly what you need. So when you click okay on that, it'll have you give it a name again. Call this fuzzy test. I'm just gonna stick this on the desktop for now. All right. We're in Photoshop. And here is our blank PSD. All right, you can see fuzzy test dot PSD. All right. So again, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't need to do anything major here, but it, and I wouldn't necessarily do titles or text, but maybe I, maybe I just like doing it. Maybe I have some cool text effects. So I want to design it in Photoshop and then just use it over in Premiere. You know, whatever, whatever your desire, whatever it is, you can do it. So, I mean, can you see how font and design and text challenged I am? Oh my God, what colors do I pick? I don't, I don't even know. All right, fuzzy island at home. All right, so I'm just, again, just doing this very simply just to show that this is now living live inside of Premiere, okay? So, uh, and here I'll do a little, little box as well. Let's fill it. With, uh, oh gosh, I don't even know. Blue. <laughs> I'm so, just awful. Worst designer ever. Ugh. And it just stresses me to no end. All right, at least I don't have a stroke on there. All right, and here I'll even adjust the opacity because that just looks just awful. It's just the worst. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to save. And when I go over to Premiere, nothing, right, because I need to actually add the PSD into the project, okay? So uh, let's see, where do we have that video? Okay, right there. So I'm going to take the Photoshop PSD, which you can see right here, and let's go ahead and drag this into the timeline right there. Great, look at my amazing Photoshop skills, perfect, okay. Now, again, let's say I didn't like that rectangle, I can turn that off and also I just despise the way that looks. So let's um, change that to Cool Vetica and uh, let's change this to Cozy Island da, 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 at home. Again, don't mind my Photoshop ability here. Um, but now when I click back to Premiere, <clears throat> updated, right? It's not dynamic link, it's literally Let's say I close this. Let's get out of Photoshop. Okay. Now this lives in the project. Oh, I need to change that again. Okay. Right click, edit original. Or you could do edit in Adobe Photoshop. But edit original, it already has the metadata so it knows where this was created. So it'll go right back there. So if I choose edit original, it'll relaunch Photoshop for us. It will reopen the file. Here it is do our thing, change the color, do purple because pink wasn't offensive enough. <laughs> Back over to Premiere and it changes, okay? It's a system, right? You've heard my colleague Brian O'Neill Hughes, if you watch any of our Max presentations, talk about Lightroom as a system. Last year at Max, my colleague Emily talked about Photoshop on the iPad as the Photoshop system, right? We have design systems that are built with XD. Well, this is the video and audio system, 
okay? All of these things work together, and that includes Photoshop and Illustrator into After Effects and all that stuff. Okay, last thing. <laughs> Jezuel Rivera, where's Terry White when you need him? Yeah, don't laugh. I ask Terry for help all the time. I'm the first to say it. As uh, Dirty Harry said in 1973, Magnum Force, good man always knows his limitations. It's very true. What's up, Brandon? How are you doing? All right. Jezuel Rivera, it's always interesting to see how everyone organizes their workspaces and windows. Oh yeah, now a lot of mine, of course, are are designed to work for the stream, but yeah, I, I change I change the layouts all the time. But these are largely configured so that I'm always carefully tucked into a corner, <laughs> but appropriately so. All right, no one puts baby in a corner. Last thing we're gonna do here. So let me just close this because it's very busy, and I'm gonna show you character animator. Okay, now this for those of you unfamiliar. Oh, here, let me get rid of all this other. I need some space in here. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar, uh, Character Animator, as the marketing tagline goes, allows you to bring your 2D and 3D artwork illustration, character art, to life. Because it works natively with Photoshop and Illustrator files. Case in point, I have this character named Heather here. If you look over at the puppet panel here, we're not going to get into all the details, but the puppet panel is in fact your layers panel. And you can see all of the various layers of all of the elements illustrated in this design here, all right? And effectively, what we allow you to do is once you layer and create your illustration, again, this one this one appears like this, this was probably done in Illustrator from what I'm guessing. You can then start using the tag panel here to tell Character Animator, okay, that's an eye, that's an eyeball, that's a nose, that's a mouth, and then we have what we call all of our um, our uh, visemes, so you know all the different mouth shapes. Because one of the things that Character Animator does is that it automatically, using your camera and microphone, will lip sync and animate the mouth as well as eyes and arms and eyebrows and hair and everything else. Amazing application to do a cartoon, to do animation, do anything. All right. So here is um, if we go into the record mode here. This is something that I actually did. Uh, a couple of weeks ago on another stream, actually it was for an internal stream, now that I'm remembering, I had to do a, a video overview for my colleagues. So again, the basis of how this works, you can see my webcam up here. All right, now my monitor is already tilted, but the way it works is you set your rest pose. And if you look really carefully, it's using the After Effects face tracker to capture all elements of my mouth, my nose, my face, my jaw, my eyebrows, and then reflects those in our character Heather here. All right, even her wavy hair. Okay, so you do, oh, and by the way, you can have all kinds of things like triggers. So uh, I'm trying to remember here, what are some of these? Oh, poof, she's got a hat on here. All right, and just in general. <laughs> got a couple of other cool ones here. Yay, and then I can pick up her arm and wave to you all. How's it going, okay? And all of this can be recorded down here in the timeline, all right? So once I've done all of that, just as we saw before, I can now take this recording. I can jump over to Premiere and I can drop this via dynamic link into Premiere Pro. So now I can finish and finesse my edit, my, my animation, whatever it is, okay? And you can see that just as with After Effects before, CH proj, okay, that's the character animator project file, right? And again, Everything as I scrub through this, it'll play audio too. Hi everyone, thanks for watching the Lunch and Learn today. Okay. It works as expected. And just as with other things, as I showed you, if I were to go back to Character Animator here, now let's say I wanted her bangs. We have all these th things that allow you to control physics. So it's like wind and you can do all this cool stuff with bouncing objects and collisions and stuff. Let's say that I wanted her to have really wavy, crazy bangs. The wind is blowing 
and her bangs are doing that, all right? My bangs are going crazy. All right, I just added a new piece of the recording there with our moving bangs, all right? Click back over to Premiere Pro. You may have noticed a little progress bar there. It has now added that bit. Now again, just like with After Effects, it's gonna take a second to cache those changes. The audio always comes over first. All right, it's taking a little bit longer. All right, taking a little bit, there we go. You can now see the bangs moving as I'm scrubbing through it. So again, the changes we just made already reflected. And there's so much more that you can do with this. It's so cool. You can also do this dynamic link from Character, uh, character Animator into After Effects. But sadly, my friends, we are out of time. So thank you so much for joining. See you again next time. Next week, again, we've got our special Adobe live stream uh, with the video team. And coming up next, we've got Paul Traney again with the Illustrator Creative Challenge. So have a good one, and we'll see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.